In this video, we're going to take a look at some key logical equivalences, including De Morgan's laws, but I have to warn you ahead of time, we are not going to use these in this video. We are only going to introduce them. So move on to video nine if you want to see why we're going through this. But here in video eight, we're just going to introduce those equivalences so that you have them, so that when we start using them in the next video, they're not, it's not the first time that you're seeing them. Again, we're just going to take a look at these laws and we're not going to use these until we get to the next video, but this is a good introduction. Whenever we're dealing with laws that include T, that means it's a tautology. So again, we talked about that. That is um, a proposition or compound proposition that is always true. If you have something that is false, that means it's always false or it's a contradiction. So just keep that in mind as we're looking at these. So we have the identity laws that are saying if we have P and true, it's equivalent to P. If you have P or false, it's equivalent to P. Remember, this is equivalent to, we're talking about logical equivalence. Domination laws, P or true is equivalent to true. P and false is equivalent to false. The indepotent laws, P or P is, is equivalent to P, P and P is equivalent to P. The double negation law, this one's pretty straightforward. We already talked about a not, not P is equivalent to P. The absorption laws, um, if we have P and, I'm sorry, P or P and Q, it's congruent or equivalent to P, or we have P and P or Q is equivalent to P. And then the negation laws, if we have P or not P, that's true. But if we have P and not P, that's false. So again, tautology, contradiction. A few more logical equivalences. Um, I kept these on a separate page because these are words that you've seen before with the possible exception of De Morgan's laws. But a commutative law, we know commutative is just talking about the order. So notice the order doesn't matter if I'm dealing with two propositions. For the associative laws, be careful here. Nope, sorry, not on that one. The associative laws, again, we're looking at the same. So if it's an or, it continues to be or. If it's an and, it continues to be and. Um, and again, associative just deals with grouping. So this one is order. This one is grouping. And then the distributive laws, this is the one you have to be careful on. So here, if I'm distributing a P or, and notice I've got P or, and now I've got Q and R, then it's P or Q and P or R. So again, we are just distributing the same way you would think of the P or Q, P or R with the and in between. Same thing here. They can't be the same sign. So I have P and Q or R gives me P and Q or P and R. And then we have De Morgan's laws. And again, we're going to use these quite often and it deals with negating a compound proposition. So if I'm negating an and, then I end up with not P or not Q. And if I'm negating an or statement, then I end up with not P and not Q. So you might be asking yourself, well, why are we learning this? What are we doing? Well, I want to go on to the next slide and show you something that we did in the last video showing that something is true using a truth table. Uh, and then I want to show you another way to go about it. So again, if you'd recall from our last video, we were showing things were equivalent using a truth table. And if you'll remember, this was one of the examples that we did. We have not P and Q is equivalent to not P or not Q. And we did this using a truth table and I'm not going to go through the truth table again step by step because we've already done it. But notice here and here, the truth values were the same for every instance, false, true, true, true. And that is how we showed 
with a truth table that two things were equivalent or logically equivalent to one another. So what we're going to move on to in our next video is to be able to show that things like this are true, but we're going to be using all of those laws that we just talked about. Here are just a few more equivalencies for you. And again, best idea is to take a screenshot of these. These don't have special names, but all of the ones that I've written here in pink um, involve conditional statements, implications, if-then statements. All of the ones I've written in yellow, which there are only four, involve biconditional statements or the if and only if statements. So if you're going to use these in a logical equivalence proof that we're going to go over in a little bit, you're just going to have to write out what the law says as opposed to writing the name of the law, which, what, which is what we'll do for any of the ones that I've shown you on the previous slides. So stick with me for the next video where we're going to use all of those laws we just talked about.